So of course, remote start season is just around the corner. And here on CMA, we are here to make sure you have the right information so you are getting the right stuff into your customers' vehicles. On today's episode, we've got a feature brand that's been around for a long time. So much, in fact, that they own the website caralarm.com. Of course, we're talking about Omega, and today we've got their product specialist, Mike, coming on to talk to us about the latest goods, technology, and feature updates that you need to know about. This is CMA Connected, brought to you by SiriusXM, all about Omega. And it starts now. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another CMA Connected, brought to you by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu, and we are talking Omega Research. Yes, the brand that has quite a few innovations under their belt and recently have introduced a couple new features that I think are not only going to make consumers happy, but even from an installation side, that efficiency that's going to provide you with these new pieces that we're going to be talking about today. But I'm not going to spill all the beans. Uh, Mike, why don't you give us a quick brief overview of what we're going to be discussing today? Ben, it's good to see you. Glad to be on CMA. I'm really excited to talk about uh, all the new products that we're releasing this season, uh, product updates to our remote starters, and some tech support solutions that I think you guys are going to like. Mike, I'm excited to get into it with you, but first, an opportunity for our partner, SiriusXM, to remind you dealers out there why it's always a great add-on option. And when we come back, we've got Mike Thompson in the house, and we're talking Omega. Don't you dare go away. Hi, Paul Truman here with SiriusXM. We reached out to some of our partners in the industry, and here's what they had to say. I can't say more or enough about just uh, what it means to have our unit working with SiriusXM. It's like we're there now. The SiriusXM service is something consumers want, right? So it's Paul. That allows a consumer to listen to either podcasts, entertainment, sports, all at their fingertips. It's all about engagement, and that's what SiriusXM provides. SiriusXM is a huge component uh, in a vehicle nowadays. Consumers expect that technology to be available, both in our OEM system as well as the aftermarket upgrades that they're applying to their vehicle. Alpine and SiriusXM, through our electronics, are able to offer the consumer on the aftermarket side SiriusXM 360L, which is an expanded platform for SiriusXM. And it's really been a beneficial relationship for us with SiriusXM. As a dealer, just remember, we don't compete with anybody else. We are absolutely one of the best profitability accessories you can add to any head unit that is Sirius XM ready. Welcome back, everybody, to the show. Of course, we're talking about Omega Research and the remote starter category. Mike, I got a long list in front of me, so let's get right into it. You know, when it comes to the world of remote start, um, there is nothing more prevalent than the fact that technology has really advanced. And more so in the fact that the user has a certain expectation when it comes to the way they interact with their remote starter. So I'd like to start the conversation with something that was introduced a couple years back, but I'd like to hear in your words, you know, how this has really evolved and become a staple within the offering. And we're talking about the Link R. Well, Ben, uh, Linker, uh, it's, it's been around for quite a while. We've, um, uh, any of our dealers that are watching, they're going to be familiar with our M1 series. We had an international one where you could drop your own SIM into it. Um, our legacy in telematics goes way back into the late 90s. Um, I've been with Omega since then, actually, and I've uh, I helped develop some of the first mobile uh, telematics devices. Uh, we had one called Omega GPS back in the day, uh, and a bunch of other ones since then that uh, really helped build our our pedigree and our experience up into what's going on with Linker. Um, we've re released our MBT Bluetooth um, direct control device uh, last year with uh, that gives installers uh, some powerful programming tools, updating tools, and then the end users really get to enjoy having what we call a virtual fob on their phone uh, for direct control. They can share it with family members or coworkers uh, and all that kind of fun stuff. And then we also have our unlimited range Linker LT series, uh, which uh, was a, a combined effort with us, um, our cousins at uh, the other Vox brands and automobility distribution. We are really proud of what everyone's accomplished there. Uh, we've done the LT, the LT2, and this year we have the LT3 which brings a lot of advanced GPS capabilities, uh, full tracking. So it's going to be ideal for small fleets and all that kind of stuff. You know, Mike, I want to take this opportunity and uh, let's show the folks at home what this new LT3 interface looks like. Um, 
you know, let's put it up on the screen and just briefly go through some of the key elements that people need to know about. Well, you guys, if you've been doing uh, any telematics with us over the last couple of years, you're definitely familiar with the Linker LT2. Um, it's uh, kind of been our doorbuster uh, telematics product. It's been super popular. Um, and this year we rolled out the LT3, which even brings a new app, the LTX app. So we have the LT app that you're used to, but now we have LTX. Um, we made a decision to roll out a new app so that we could uh, – really integrate the features that, that we wanted that were not gonna work or be backwards compatible with the old app. And so what you're looking at now is the control screen of the LTX app. Um, it's, it's vastly different than the old app. You see we have a new dashboard. Um, we have the cluster that really shows the vehicle's location, voltage, um, and it'll show the temperature for the vehicle location. Uh, you tap in it and there you go. You can see uh, your vehicle and where it is. Here we are sitting at uh, Omega headquarters in Douglasville, Georgia. Um, if you come back, you got lock, unlock, start, stop. You can uh, also restart the start timer, um, which the timer will show up above the dashboard up here. I don't have an active remote start on this one, so uh, I'm not gonna activate that for you. You guys will just have to get one and check it out or check out one of our other videos. Um, you can uh, assign any and all uh, auxiliaries that you'd like to have, and it's an easy uh, swipe back and forth, as you can see. Um, you can hop down. If we get into the GPS menu again, you'll see that um, you can sit at the bottom there. There's your navigation for all the new advanced GPS features. So we have two subscription levels um, this year uh, for this product. The first one gives you your basic control and locate on demand, fairly similar to what you were used to with the LT2, um, but the premium subscription gives you um, a lot more advanced uh, GPS capabilities. So you're gonna get um, guard, which is sort of like uh, a very small geofence around the vehicle, like a tow alert the type of functionality. You got geofence and speed alerts that you can set up so you can draw any circle, rectangle, or polygon geofence. Um, you can log all of your trips, so you get breadcrumbing, and you can hit find for um, locating right now on demand. And, um, and there's a lot more of the features that we're rolling out. So hop over to linkermobile.com to learn more. So obviously the benefits of the link are, are numerous. One, of course, being the fact that it is, of course, controlled by cellular service. But what about a situation where you may not have that connectivity to a cell network? Maybe you're in the country, in a rural area. Maybe you're underground. Well, don't worry. Omega has come up with another device that alleviates that through Bluetooth connectivity. But not only that, there are some extra perks in there for installers as well. Man, I'm really glad you brought that up. Uh, I was really wanting to talk about this. Uh, Linker MBT is um, one of my pet projects and also uh, one of my favorite things to use on a day-to-day -day basis. I like to hike a lot um, and I'm in the mountains a lot. So my normal Linker, my LT3 and my LT2s just don't work up there. And that's pretty frustrating when camping and my kid or my wife wants to get into our camper van and I'm at the bathhouse uh, taking a shower or something. Um, so you're not having to keep track of keys or who's got the keys or that kind of thing. Um, so you can use direct Bluetooth communication to control this thing. And I can, sh and within the app, I can share each of my devices with anyone and it's unique to each device. So the camper van I can share with my um, wife and my kid and Say you have a work vehicle, you could share that only with coworkers, something like that. And it's always going to work. You don't have to worry about being in the cell network and all that kind of thing. Because even if your phone doesn't have um, cell, uh, cellular connectivity or, or Wi-Fi, it will communicate to the linker MBT directly so that you can lock, unlock, start, whatever you need to do. So let's hop into the linker app and then you'll see what I'm talking about. So when you're on the control screen here, um, that's a pretty familiar looking interface. You see the little status bar above the start button. That's got your Bluetooth connectivity strength. This thing gets about, um, I get about 200 foot of range, um, especially when I'm off grid out in the mountains and stuff. But basically it'll do a reliable up to 200 feet with a direct line of sight um, connection. 
you'll see the clock there next to the uh, signal strength, which is the engine runtime when it's remote started. And then next to that, you'll see um, the temperature. That's actually inside the cabin temperature, not just local weather like a lot of the other telematics devices have. Um, ours actually talks to the built-in um, temp sensor on our remote start module. So all its caliber 70 series units and Crime Stopper G6 units have a built-in temperature sensor. So it'll actually tell you what's going on directly in the cabin. Um, and if you hop up and hit the gear icon up here, you can see at the bottom, the authorized users. This is where I can um, share with anyone that I like. So all they have to do is register for free in the app. And then you just type in their email after hitting the plus button here, and that'll uh, let you add them. And then you can delete them anytime you want as well. So you can do temporary access. Um, there's a lot of capabilities there. Um, if we go to the top here in the device info, you can see this is information about the Linker MBT itself. So it's giving you the serial number. It tells you that you're the owner. You can rename it. You see I have it named Forerunner from my uh, uh, deeply cherished 1996 third gen Forerunner and, um, and all that fun stuff. Uh, you can edit the image shown for the vehicle. And uh, this is where we really bring in a lot of benefits and differentiation for the installers to really uh, up your install game, save you time this uh, remote start season through the ability to configure the remote start um, through the app while it's installed in the vehicle. So you don't have to unplug it and connect it to WebLink to make sure that you set a feature right. You're not counting chirps anymore and button taps and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and you can hop in, oh, installer gives you a warning to proceed with caution. Uh, in case an end user were to go into it. Um, but even if so, they're not gonna change anything to break their vehicle. You can, so you can set anything you need to set. You can reload defaults, you can hit save. Um, and probably one of the coolest parts about this is anytime someone does this, it saves all of their system settings to their account on our uh, Linker MBT server. So our tech support team can actually see what the settings are for that device. If you call in and there's a problem and you don't know what's wrong, um, then they can quickly look and see how the system was configured and make recommendations on what to change and can walk you through it. We cannot change it on, on the customer's behalf or on your behalf, um, but we can easily uh, describe you how to do it yourself. And then uh, beyond that, you can also go in here and you can update the system firmware um, to the latest. So you can see here at the top, we have version 2.0 is now available for all of our 70 series. And then we're, I think we're gonna talk, hopefully Ben's gonna ask me about some of that here in, in a minute, but um, you can do this update uh, while it's installed in the vehicle. So the customer can do it themselves if they wanna take advantage of new functions features, it's not gonna upset their, uh, their feature settings because we won't release um, a full-blown firmware like this that won't retain their existing settings just so it doesn't break anything. And then, um, so you're, you're gonna save a ton of time. You can do this in le way less time than digging out the unit or counting chirps um, or plugging it into anything. Even if you have the mobile programmers that we offer for Omega Link and that kind of thing, this guy's faster and it retails for an, about the same price as a backup fob. It's, you can, it's retailing around 50 bucks. So even if you use it just as an installer tool, it's kind of a no-brainer as a pass-through sell to your customer. It just ensures that if they come back, you're going to be able to look and solve, look at and solve problems very quickly. Like I had mentioned, there's definitely some perks with this new system when it comes to the installer side of things because, well, let's face it, it's going to be simple. You don't need to take the unit out. You can do it on the phone. But let's go through real quick, Mike, uh, the installation because I noticed the unit you know, just to make sure that people understand exactly how this works. Oh, I'm glad you asked that as well, Ben. The, this guy, it's a, it's a slam dunk. It just, if you see here, it's got two ports on it. The black port is a uh, direct connection to the data port on the remote start via just a regular uh, data link type cable. And, uh, and this is our, this is our first version cable. We do have a new one that, um, that plugs in at the remote start like this. So it plugs in the remote start. And then your pass-through port, which is the white port on here, now is getting fed back down near the brain. So um, you're not disrupting your harness routing. 
and this thing's twice as long now so that um, you can get it up and out. You can get it on the base of the windshield. I stick mine on the bottom of the, uh, the steering column clamshell um, for maximum range and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's like a, it's a one minute install. Um, your customers are crazy not to take advantage of this for just a few bucks and it's going to give you insurance down the line. Now, as I move on this list of uh, items that we want to discuss here today, Mike, I remember the transition from remote start analog systems, and then we saw digital systems, and digital systems have kind of taken over now. But now I see this interesting two-word acronym, and I have to ask you what you mean when now you're saying Omega Remote Start now has AI? What's this about? Yeah, it is uh, a little bit of a buzzword these days, um, but it's truly what we're doing. Um, we call the, the specific feature that we're utilizing in all of our 70 series units, um, uh, vehicle learn is the actual process. And what it's actually doing um, is it's, it's using a couple of custom and patented algorithms that we have to identify um, all vehicle circuits, make sure that they are mission critical remote start vehicle circuits, um, make sure that they are configured properly to match the vehicle. So if you have ignition, accessory, start, and you've got them all mixed up connection-wise in the vehicle, or in this case, you can intentionally connect them without caring about which ones are ignition timing, accessory timing, or starter, and uh, the unit will detect and reconfigure itself to match. It'll also prioritize engine detection methods. So it will go out first and foremost to your interface module, It'll ask it what protocol it's been programmed for, and it'll change the protocol language um, to match it. So I don't know how many times we get tech calls for guys that, um, oh, my remote start's not working, the bypass isn't working, and it, all they did was they, they either flashed the module for the wrong protocol or didn't set the right protocol in the main unit. Um, well, this guy is going to go out and auto-detect that and uh, and configure it to match and you won't even know that it's happening in the background. Um, in addition to that, it's gonna look for the best available engine detection method. So it's gonna look for data attack because that's the preferred method um, and automatically switch to data attack if it's available. Uh, it's gonna look, uh, if that's not available, it's gonna look at the TAC wire. If you've connected a TAC wire, it's gonna automatically switch to TAC wire mode and sample the vehicle's TAC signal. And then if that's not available, we're going to switch, uh, fall back to our um, voltage, our progressive alternator voltage sensing uh, detection method, which has an all new algorithm. Um, it basically performs very similar to a TAC wire mode. Um, it detects um, success much quicker than our units used to. And, um, and it's able to cope with voltage dips for newer alternators that just turn on and off based on vehicle demand. Um, and, and that's the bulk of AI. The other thing that we have going on um, that a lot of people don't realize is that even our non-blade uh, keyless start module here is equipped with a full security suite. Um, they both are. We, we sell both, mo both modules um, in alarm and non-alarm keyless entry only configurations. And, but if they're set up as a keyless entry, then it will know if you are connecting um, a sensor. So if you plug in a shock sensor, for example, and then it'll say, oh, you must be wanting me to act as a car alarm. So it's gonna detect that and automatically enable all the alarm functionalities automatically. So you don't have to program anything on. If a customer comes back with a keyless start and they say, yeah, I wanna add an alarm to it. You don't have to deinstall it or any of that kind of stuff and re reinstall it. All you gotta do is plug in a sensor. Um, and even on our non, uh, blade unit that doesn't have all of the ports. We have a, um, <clears throat> a data shock that can plug into the data port. It also has a pass-through port like the Linker uh, MBT and it will, uh, it'll, it'll bring door triggers and all the stuff that's missing from this to, uh, to create a full-blown uh, alarm remote start system for your customer. And you don't have to change anything about the install. Just plug in the sensor and you're basically good to go. And that was Omega's Mike Thompson, their product development manager, joining us for this session, giving us all the newest updates when it comes to Omega systems, whether it was the MBT, the Link R, or as you now know, AI, apparently. 
So if you want more information on any of the products covered on today's show and beyond, of course, make sure you head over to their website, caralarm.com. Now, my takeaway, I mean, the you know, the Link R system has been there for a long time. It's nice to see the updates. I think the MBT is certainly a game changer, not only for the customer because of that connectivity with Bluetooth, but I love how this is going to really um, make ins updates more efficient. You know, it's a future-proof system. Literally, get the update, configure it the way you want from the convenience of the phone, never having to touch the installation, the hardware at all. And finally, what more can I say on the AI element? This one's a new one, and I wasn't sure what this was about, but after Mike explained it, I definitely see where this is going, and I can only see how much more intuitive and smarter these systems are going to be, especially with the complexity of the vehicles that are coming into our shops. That's it for the CMA Connected, brought to you by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect.